forget this, the president said things for now. When you go into a situation, when you, when you have a plan, when you're starting a business, if you already started to defeat yourself by assuming you will not achieve your goal, you will not achieve your goal. You have to, when you're doing a business plan, you want to start a company or you want to go and get a job, you go into interview, you don't go into the interview process already defeating yourself and saying, well, what I would do if I don't get the job? You go into the interview confident, preparing that you will get a job, that they will hire you, that they will give you employment. If you want a promotion at work, you work for it, you, you pray for it, you, you, you do what's required to, to get it. You don't already start saying, oh, I want a job, but I know I will not get a job. So I will just set up for, for plan B. I don't think that way. We shouldn't think that way, right? So, so yes, I am confident because I will do the work. But I keep saying at the end of the day, the decision will be up to the CPU partisans. Liberian. And it will be up to Liberian people. But I will do the work and I will believe. And in the end, the result will be what the result will be. It's, 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 it's your confidence synonymous or arrogance. Uh, I don't believe so. Not at all. Uh, people who know me and, and over the next weeks, days, and months, more and more librarians will get to drive around the country. I'm not an arrogant person. I don't believe I am. Um, but am I confident? Yes. Uh, and I make no apologies for, for being confident, right? Because my track record and history lends itself to that. Um, but, but it's not by any stretch uh, arrogance. But again, forget me personally out of this situation. Forget this discussion about the Liberian presidency. I want Liberians. I want you to listen to my voice to aspire to be the best. To not settle too quickly. To not go into a situation already being defeated. So check with the guys. Already correctly. believing. So you got so a plan Chris, B, but you don't want to let it out. No, now, no, I do not have a plan B. It doesn't seem to have plan B, uh, Chris. I, 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 I I'm ascribing, I'm ascribe, I'm, I'm focusing on my plan A. And I want librarians to, to all of you listening, including <clears> you, you guys. <throat> Don't go into any situation already accepting defeat. Because when you start to focus on a plan B, that means you're not confident. You, you so don't the plan B will not just be defeat. The last time we had, we had this interaction in Vongela, in a very studio looking just like this, I mean, in terms of color, yeah, that's uh, right. on King Toma, you said uh, you, could, you could accept an outcome if it were freely and fairly conducted. And I in my opinion, that. Accepting an outcome with that characterization could be your plan B. No, it's not a plan B. It, the, 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 the point I'm, I'm making is that we are in a collaboration where we have agreed a process for deciding who will be the standard bearer. I am going to do the work within the rules we've agreed so that I can come out on top, and I believe I will. But in the, let me finish. Yeah. Let me finish. Yeah. Uh, you you got to give me a small chance. Yeah, go ahead. If, in the unlikely case, I am not successful, I am prepared to live with the outcome of that decision and support the outcome of that decision. The answer is absolutely yes. There's no doubt about it. But I can't be going into that process already settling or believing that I will not I will not be successful. So so that's a difference. And I want librarians to understand the difference, right? We're going to the process, Lawrence, with a belief that we'll do the work to the earlier question, we will do the work so that we'll be successful. But if we're not, because you, we don't control the entire outcome. So if we're not, we'll live with the outcome of that decision. We'll support the outcome of that decision. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, and nobody goes to uh, a competition not wanting to win. And let me ask a question this way. Mr. Kumi, in the worst case, where you are not selected standard bearer of the CPP, what role will you play in the politics in 2023? I will support the outcome of the CPP process for the election of the standard bearership. I, I will support that outcome, right? And we'll support, meaning we'll support that person, campaign for that person. We'll support the outcome of the decision, no question about it. Um, because at the end of the day, it is the unity of the CPP that I think will enable us to make president we are a one-term president. It's not any one individual, but the unity Whoever the CPP candidate is will defeat President We are in 2023. And that should be our goal, and that is certainly my goal. So so to answer your question, Clarence, we will accept the outcome and will support the outcome of that decision 
in every way necessary to make sure we make present we are before t mark comes in the legislature mm -hmm. plays an important role in the ballot politics of our country and most of the time a lot of Liberians believe that Liberia's problem is at the legislature. Mr. Cummings, you were head of the CPP in 20, 2020. As a, as a matter of fact, you took CPP to um, an elections, and you, you won a lot of seats on, on your chairmanship. Now, my question is, how effective is the CPP in influencing decisions by CPP lawmakers in plenary? Do you, in fact, have some leverage over them? So, we have some work to do in that area, uh, Clarence in terms of uh, working with our legislative uh, caucus, and the CP caucus, to influence uh, legislation. Mm -hmm. um, what I would say is that um, we've had some uh, success, but not enough, and we have some work to do. We have to make sure we have regular interactions with them. We have to make sure um, we are working with them to propose solutions uh, and, and therefore legislation. Um, so we've made some progress, um, but we got work to do to, to improve those processes, to make sure that we are coherent, that we're together uh, in improving. But again, I remind uh, our country and our people that, uh, you know, democracy, these processes take time, they don't happen overnight. You know, as a child, you gotta crawl first, then you walk before you run. And so the expectation that we would just start to run in every respect, was not realistic. Um, we're in the crawling stage um, as a collaboration. We will work our way, we'll get to the walking stage very quickly, I'm, uh, I'm pretty confident, and then we'll start running and everything will work, we'll, we'll work together. So we have to work to do in that respect, but, but we're making progress. I, I, I want to continue with that leadership because it's very important to me. Um, as far as 2003 is concerned, I'm, 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 I'm not into uh, the ranking about the, I'm, 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 I'm looking at what do Liberians expect to see in 2023? We're looking for a leader. Liberia certainly does. What should Liberians expect of that leader? Joseph Weicker put it, I will quote him for what he said. Liberians are not prepared to give the leadership of the country to a stranger. Wine becomes better and sweeter with age. So, so what are we looking for? What should Liberians expect? Should we expect age as a criteria for that leadership? Or should we look for the guy's capacity to give us new approach to solving Liberian complex problems? So the saying I like to, to use uh, all the time, uh, Tim Max to answer that question, is it, it's a true and a it's a universal saying. It says the best uh, way to predict future behavior or future performance mm -hmm. is based on past behavior and past performance. So if you, in your past behavior and past performance, have consistently delivered results, it's very likely, highly likely in the future you deliver results. So I want the librarian people to look at everybody who's competing to serve them as their leader and look at what have they done. Regardless of age, what have they done? Have they actually delivered? Are there things you can point to? Whether they've done it personally, or whether they've done it in the private sector, or whether they've done it when they're in government, any combination of those things, what can they point to? What have they done that will give you confidence that you can predict they will do that in the future? And I think that's what we need to look at. Librarians want a leader who can deliver results, who is solution-oriented, who will bring new ideas. I keep saying we cannot keep doing the same things and expect different results. We cannot keep selecting, electing people with the same experiences and expect things to change. We gotta do things differently, and we, but we gotta look at this past behavior, past performance. If you have had tons of experience, quote unquote, but you cannot point to anything substantive that you have done or achieved, what is in your personal life, your professional life, your government life, very good chances that you will not be able to do that come January 2024 when you take the oath of office. So these are the things we need to look for, and I, I believe Liberians are not at the point. Liberians are very cynical. Correctors are very skeptical. They've been mm -hmm. lied to by politicians, and now they're looking at what we have done, not just what we say. 
uh, and I think Liberians will make a right call in terms of who should lead them going forward. Okay, in politics, people would say all politics is local. If you had a presidential elections in Nimba today, the Nimba people would prefer it to vote. If Senator Prince Johnson contested as president, they would have uh, voted him in the first round. If you went to Bassa, it's always being a stronghold of Charles Walker, Brunskin, all politics is local. Now, President George Weah is president of the country. He will want to maintain the seat in 2023. He comes from Grand Cru. Alexander Cummings comes from Maryland County, the southeast of Liberia. It means... UN President we are comes from the same region of the country. If you were elected standard bearer of the CPP, Mr. Cummings, can you deliver the Southeast or Maryland to George? I mean, to the CPP ahead of George Weah's CDC? So the, the way I like to answer that question, Clarence, is um, we are aspiring to lead the entire country, not any one particular region, any one particular uh, uh, religion tribe or gender. Uh, my focus is on redefining constituencies. Uh, my focus is on defining constituencies that cut across tribal lines, geographic lines, sectional lines, because again, these are the kinds of things we need to challenge and be changing, right? So we are focused on youth, the young people and their challenges, and that cuts across the country. We are focused on women and the challenges faced by women, and that cuts across the country. Uh, we are focused on civil servants who are, do not get paid regularly, whose salaries have been harmonized. That cuts across the country. We are focused on teachers, healthcare workers, who again are struggling, who are not getting paid every month. These are the constituencies we are reaching out to because it cuts across the country, because we want to break all of the old traditions. I think some of these things are held us back. To be frankly, to be honest, right? So, you know, I describe this, the opportunities we have in Liberia as this bowl of rice, or you can call it bowl of GB or fufu, don't, whatever you eat, that we all partake of. And the history of our country is that we have limited who can access that bowl of rice because of some of these old thinking. So, in the past, the quote unquote Congo people used to limit who, who eat in that bowl of rice. We gotta stop that. Then, you know, now it's, if you're not sedition, you can't eat in that bowl of rice. The only thing that should limit your ability to eat in that bowl of rice is you got to follow the rules of the law because if you don't, constitutionally, whatever the consequences are, will, will make sure you receive it. And then if you work hard, if you endorse it, you eat more of the rice or not. Those things you control as individual Liberians. You decide whether you want to follow the rules or not, and you decide how you want to work. If you work hard, you eat a lot of the rice. If you don't work hard, you won't. Those are the things, one of the things that should limit the opportunities of Liberians. And so I want to reconstruct how we think about each other and ourselves. And the youth of our country, whether you're from the Southeast, whether you're from the North Central, the Western part of the country, the challenges are the same. You need jobs, you need vocational training, you need education. We need to provide those things to you. If you are a market woman, you need credit, you need facilities, you need cold storage. These are things that cut across the country, and these are the messages, these are the constituents we want to speak to. If you are a policeman, you want to get paid regular, you want to have equipment, you want to have your uniforms. You know, so this is how I want us to start to Does rethink. that mean you don't have a political base? My political base is Liberia. My political base are the constituencies I'm talking about. So again, we are trying to redefine how we should think about our country, because if we keep falling back into these old constructs, we will not move our country forward. It seems everybody wants to be president of Liberia. Who means why you? Well, I'm not why sure. I'm not sure. Why? 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 Well, no, 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 that, that's, 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 I'm, I'm Why not. should Liberians so, go to the pool and vote him? Yes, it's, it's a fair question, uh, <laughs> from from uh, from. So you tell me. Uh, no, let, let, let me let me answer the question, gentlemen. Um, <laughs> what uh, I say to Liberians is that I have been incredibly blessed in life. You know, many times 
people who have had some success, I think, give themselves too much personal credit, too much personal attribution. And I always thought that I've been blessed, and Providence has played a big part, blessed to be a librarian, something I'm very proud of. Blessed to have been born in a family. My parents started from very modest beginnings, but good values, good work ethic. That's not something I choose to, to be. Blessed to have half a brain. I tell people that wasn't a choice. And then blessed to have had a lot of experiences, uh, both experiences growing up in our country with all the challenges that come with that, experiences of living and working in other countries and see how things are done. I've lived and worked in Nigeria, in Kenya, in South Africa, in the UK, the United States. And all of these things we can bring to bear and bring opportunities to our country. And so for me, it's about service. It's about bringing different thinking. It's about uplifting all Liberians so that we can transform and change our country. And so I'm passionate. I feel this intense obligation to help the country of my birth because I believe we can do better. I, as I've mentioned, I've lived in other countries and they are no brighter or smarter than you and I. They are not. We've competed with them and we beat them at competition. And if we can give librarians similar opportunities, they will do as well or better than I did. And this is the passion I bring to wanting to help, to serve our country. Uh, and I believe we collectively, and I used to wear we deliberately because no one person, I cannot do it by myself and I don't pretend I can. But we collectively, like minds, we can change this country. Not over and not easily, but it can be done. And we gotta work hard, we gotta push each other, we gotta sacrifice. If we do those things, we can and will change Liberia. Let, uh, I, 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 I wanna get on the government. Okay. Um, the last time we had an interview with you, that was at, um, at Truth FM, and I asked you your performance, the, the greatest performance of the we are led government. You gave it an, an abundant air. The fifth best of the year calculation. Uh, the government is 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 how quality the government is in Lofa. Lofa was one of the counties. The, the only county they lost, according to statistics, how reliable that statistic. I can't put my finger on that because we have 15 political subdivisions in Liberia. The only county we are, didn't win was Lofa. What is your impression is in Lofa that it seems to be capturing Lofa? With this translate in your mind. Mm -hmm. Um, in 2023. Yeah, look, T Max. Uh, the, the only thing I know about the president's trip to Lofa is what I see in the papers, mm -hmm. and you know it appears he's gotten big crowds. Mm -hmm. uh, but but I don't know, and time would tell whether that would translate necessarily uh, to vote in 2023, because at the end of the day, when the president leaves and the crowds disperse. The fires will go back to their life. The, the civil servants in Lofa, they will go back to, are they going to get paid every month consistently? The young people will go back to their life. Will they be getting jobs? Uh, will the schools have the materials they need uh, to, to teach our, our young people? Will the clinics in Lofa have the materials, the drugs, the, the, the syringes and so stuff they need? So, oh, no, oh, no, no. I, I believe so, it's but, but, look, but but T Max, mm -hmm. I, I hope it's not. I hope it's not. I hope that as the president leaves Lofa, because Tomo Lofa specifically, mm -hmm. that that the teachers, the civil servants, the healthcare workers, that they will start to see their pay regularly. I hope that happens. I hope the clinics will start to see drugs. I hope the schools will start to see supplies. If those things happen, he will probably win Lofa in twenty twenty three. But if he just goes and there's a euphoria, there's the crowds, and he comes back to Morovia, and things go back to where they were before he went there, I don't believe we will win in So it depends. I hope he can deliver. Look, I've said this before, that I have nothing against President Weah or the CDC like government sincerely. I do not. And I do want them to change and bring relief to Liberian people. Because nobody should want to lead our country on the back of the suffering of the people. If they start to be successful, will it make it harder for us to make our kids? Yes. But that's a good thing. I keep saying we got to push each other. We got to be more demanding of each other if we want this country to change. So we can't be wishing that the, the government doesn't do well because in our wishing, the people are suffering. 
and, and nobody should want our people to suffer. So if, President, we are in least Lofa, and those things that were there before are improved and they're getting better, he will probably win Lofa in 2023. So he, and it will make it tougher for us to, to make our case. But, but that's okay. The, we we got to keep pushing ourselves. The government made a landmark uh, visitation to the United States. What is your impression? Did it make the case? What do we expect <laughs> to see from that? I, I, I don't I don't know is it the, the honest answer, but I, I don't believe so. Let me tell you why. Look, when when the Liberia Minister of Finance and Development Planning visits any country, and I, I use Minister Tua just as an example from mm -hmm. the delegation, mm -hmm. you would think at a minimum he will meet his counterpart. Right? He will meet the Secretary of the Treasury in the case of the United States, that will be his counterpart. Or maybe even the under secretary, because okay, so Liberia is a small country, relatively speaking. Um, but you will definitely meet your your counterparts. So or the delegation they didn't meet their counterparts or senior levels in the United States government. I don't think so. Then beyond that is what substantive came out of those conversations that will help and benefit our country. I don't know what that is. I haven't seen what that is. Um, so maybe time will tell in terms of what benefit came from that visit uh and again I, I like to be fair and balanced but but based on what i've seen and what i've read uh i, I don't believe that was successful uh successful visit now uh, liberia for the past 12 13 years we've not been able to get our national budget running to saving eight hundred thousand bucks you persistently million million, million, million uh, uh seven eight hundred i mean eight hundred million dollars you have persistently said, Mr. Kumi, that when you become president of the country, you will get our budget moving to a whooping $1 billion, probably in two, three years of your presidency. I'm thinking, how will you do that? What economic growth model you know, are you going to use? So I said three to five years, okay. just to, to mm -hmm. get, uh, create the facts. But uh, let me... Let me spend some time trying to answer that question because it's an important question and again it goes to how we should be thinking about growth and development in Liberia and how, how I think about these things. So let me start by helping Liberia Liberians and those listening to me with just some simple logic. So if you look at Ghana, right, in the in the sub region here, I believe the budget is somewhere between eight and ten billion dollars, somewhere in that range. I will be close. Uh, but this is illustrative. It's meant to be directional. And Ghana is five times our population. Again, rough numbers. 25 right? million. Yeah, exactly. Roughly five. So five times. And we roughly five. Call mm -hmm. that, right? So if you just... And, and, and I'm being overly simplistic. And, and, and for those technicians listening here, I, I'm saying this is illustrative and I'm being simplistic because many reasons why it would be different. So if we're about 20% of the population and they got a, you know, 10 call it $10 billion budget, then you should say, oh, 20% of that, right? You know, we should be uh, in that, you know, sort of one and a half, two billion range, somewhere in that range. The many reasons why you could be higher or lower, but again, you just start thinking there. But the other way to, to, to think about this too is again about, we want to be aspirational about ourselves. We can't be stuck at this, you know, four, five million dollars forever because we'll never move and develop the country. And there are many things we need to do to try to grow that revenue base. So what I've said is, in no particular order, you know, first of all, we gotta look at our existing revenue sources. So we gotta look at uh, again in no particular order. We get money from customs duty and excise taxes. We get money from our from royalties from our, our resources. We get from maritime. We get from from forestry, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Are we getting the full value today from those resources? Uh, we need to make sure we are maximizing uh, maximizing that. The other thing we need to do is we got to make sure we are plugging the holes in this leaky bucket, right? And this comes to the, the, the corruption issue where if, if the bucket is leaking, you can't keep adding more to it because it will just waste. So we got to plug, plug the holes. And again, as I mentioned, we got to look at existing resources. Then we got to look at are there new revenue resources? Are there sectors we need to be developing? Uh, these are all areas. Have we created the, the climate for private sector investment, for foreign direct investments? Uh, all of those things we begin to do, begin to focus, focus on, and we'll begin to see our revenues grow. 
And that's what we need to do. We need to set ambitious goals and then do the work to achieve those goals. And so, yes, we should aspire to get our budget in three to five years to a billion dollars. And I believe it can be done. And I've given examples of the kinds of things we need to be doing and looking at that will enable us to grow and drive that budget so we can do the things required to develop this country. Otherwise, it's just talk. If we're just talking about this four or five million dollars, anything else I say to you, anybody else you, will not happen. It will just be talk. We cannot grow the revenue base because when you grow that base, then you can look at potentially taking on some debt. Um, you can do other things that will enable you will restore confidence to foreign direct investors, to business people, that things are going in the right direction, and you start to grow the, the tax base, you start to grow revenues, and it will give you the opportunity to invest in education, in health and infrastructure. If you just took at the five million dollar number, four million dollar number, not at, nothing material will change. You, and you, you, we, you, and we want material change. You talk about Ghana, you know, which is good, but Mr. Kumin, et et rations do not grow economies. You know, I was concerned about a particular economic activity on a common economic agenda, for example. So I've mentioned a, a, a list of economic activities. Let me let me let me mention even more. We need to be finding resources to invest in agriculture. We should have an agro-based economy. Yes, we are dependent on our natural resources, and there's nothing wrong with that. Look, one of the reasons why the stock of Ghana again, or even the agriculture, is even closer. Uh, Part of the reasons why they uh, are relatively more successful than we are, because they are primarily agro-based economies, and so we need to be investing. And that will be a focus of a CPP slash commissary administration. We need to be investing in tourism, ecotourism specifically, because that's a great, great job creator, um, and will also uh, 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 provide more resources and, and to our country, and again expand it, the, the tax base, and then all the usual things we all know wrong infrastructure right so roads uh, electricity running water uh, internet cellular connectivity look you you, you try for literally hours going to the studies particularly on the coastal route and you uh, no cell uh, connections that should not be in the 21st century right so those are things you focus on but but I will say though we are going to make choices and we're going to prioritize in all of those sectors because we can't do everything but but yes those are some examples of the areas we're going to focus on but it starts with good governance with restoring confidence to to the governance of our country it starts with making sure we're following the rule of law that the courts are independent that you know these are things that are foundational right to everything else i've talked about and again we gotta we gotta find the money we gotta go the revenue Okay, and this engagement has been uh, on Truth FM, or really on Truth FM, and I guess T Max or Sky FM. Am I correct? Of course. Okay. What else? So, um, <laughs> Clarence is our host here. Uh, Mr. Cummings, down the line, let's talk. You know, one thing I admire you of your regular media engagement, um, unlike your colleagues in the CBB. Sorry about that. But let's complete the economy because uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk on our economy. I want to compare situation that he was in and situation that okay then after that i can come on okay so yeah if that's something we can move on yeah that's, that's the economy is the if you cannot put bread on your table you last um less than 365 days in liberia we keep president for not being able to put bread on the table or our expectation was so huge and he lived on our expectation that we, we we did it way with too many important people because of the scarcity of the food on the table i, I take it back and please correct me if I'm wrong. I might not get the, the fact, the, the, the data. In 2014, you had a, 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 a Coca-Cola, and Coca-Cola had a budget of $200 billion. Somebody will say it's, 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 it's institutionalized, so it's easily manageable. Liberia to run a company, to run a, run a country complex. With this, we're talking about when, 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 when my brother was asking you, constituency, the lions, Strings because you're from Southeast, from the Southeast, it means that we people from the Southeast, when you become president, uh, this have our time to enjoy, and the rest of the guys in Lofa, Bong, and Niba, they better wait. You, you don't buy that concept. My point to you 
in an institution where you came from with, with a huge amount of budget, you manage that. How can that be translated in a poor country like Liberia? So just the correct facts, the, the $200 billion is the, the, the market value of Coca-Cola. Coca -Cola. Yeah, so it's a big, not $200 billion. Okay. The budgets are managed were over uh, a billion U.S. dollars. It's still substantial, bigger than our national budget. I think mm -hmm. that's, that was your point. Mm -hmm. Look, um, the, the skills required to lead and manage are similar whether you're in a, a, a large complex organization like the Coca-Cola company that is global or in a country like Liberia. And by the way, in Liberia, all of the, the, the rules, if you will, uh, the laws, the rules, they exist for us to manage this country. It's just that we don't have the discipline to follow the rules. <coughs> Those, the, 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 they exist, right? The policies exist, the rules. Exist. And so the difference between a Coca-Cola globally is that we follow the rules. And when you break the rules, there are consequences. In a CPP slash communist led administration, we'll follow the rules. We'll follow the politics. And when you break the rules, we'll, we'll, the we'll punish you. We'll we will politics. make sure that the integrated institutions are funded with the right people. They will not be encumbered in, in terms of their ability to do their work. And we'll follow the rules and we'll manage the country. It can be done, T-Max. Other countries do it not perfectly, and I'm not, we're not looking for perfection here. But we're looking for it can be done. So it can be done in Liberia. And th those, those disciplines, those processes can be applied here. As I said, many of those policies exist. Those, the laws are on the books in our country today. It's just the, the willingness to follow them, the discipline. And as a leader, we will set the example. We will make sure our behavior is will reflect the behaviors we want everybody in government to reflect, in fact, everybody in the country. And we will identify others because, look, changing this country is not just about the executive branch of government. It's about, and not just about government in general. Yes, executive branch, but it's, it's judiciary, the legislative, and it's about the society in general. We will make sure we got people in the church, in the mosque, in civil society that are exemplifying the behaviors because librarians see those people more often than we see the president. And is it is this collective group of us who are setting the example, who are who are living the values that we want that will inspire librarians to do what's necessary to change our country. And yes, there will be consequences. When you break the rules, you break the law, there will be punishment. Including Part of the, the issue with traffic, T Max, simple. Librarians face that every day. Is we don't follow the traffic rules. That is not, not acceptable. This turning business, not acceptable. We gotta follow the rules. These people, everybody got sirens running around. That can't be. That, that's those when, are when simple things we need to do that. That we need to change. When you become president, when you become president, we we'll still have the 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 advantage of the telling because you're going to work and you're late and and no taxi driver, no craze, was standing your way to go to work on time. That that those no. are the privileges we give our lawmakers and our people that govern us. No, so 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 when when there's a CPP led government, there'll be no telling. There will be no telling. Look, we the that means the, the, the convoy on time. Absolutely. Everybody got to go to work on time because I will, I, will, I will go to work on time. And like Tobo used to do, we we'll visit those ministries by surprise to make sure the people are, are coming to work on time. Okay. Uh, we will, no, let me just finish. Mm -hmm. uh, we, will, we will make sure, that, that, look, maybe only the, the heads of the three branches will be allowed to have any kind of siren. The, maybe the chief justice, Maybe the speaker on the pro temp, uh, the president, maybe the, 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 maybe the vice president. And the, look, in life, if uh, uh, Clarence if, uh, and Chris, if you don't experience the pain, if you don't do anything about it. If you can create a third lane, you are legislature, you are minister, what's the incentive to fix the rules uh, for anybody else to follow the rules? So those are simple things we got to do.
Okay. To get people to okay, follow Mr. Comments. And, and Thank you. If you're just topic. joining us, this is the OK Morning Rush. It's on 99.5. We're hosting AMC political leader Alexander Bellinger Cummings as our guest. My colleague Steemax Jalatel is here along with Christopher Salif. Uh, Truth FM in Manuvia is relaying as well as Truth FM in Saclipia, named by County. It's been relayed also on Skull FM. And my colleague Vesely Smoke just informed us that. Uh, Prime FM is also relaying the show. Mr. Cummings, uh, before we move on to the line, I'm, I'm still interested in uh, the economy on a Cummings. I'll ask and then Chris comes, comes in. I, I hope I'm not getting something wrong, but uh, I, I want to be particular about how, you know, you will harness the competitive advantages of the state to raise domestic revenue on your presidency. Yeah, so again, that, that's a, this is what I... I mentioned earlier, uh, Clarence, that there are multiple areas we'll have to look at to grow our revenue base. And again, you know, starting with uh, looking at all the existing sources, and I mentioned some of them, you know, relatives from our mineral resources, uh, from forestry, from maritime, from customs and excise duties, all of those areas, are we maximizing are we getting full benefit um, those are things we'll look at uh, again are the concessions are they paying what they should be paying I'm not suggesting they aren't or not I don't know but we'll make sure that they, they are doing that um, and then as I mentioned uh, we'll invest in areas that will also spur uh, growth in, in, in revenue I mentioned tourism I mentioned agriculture I, will, I also didn't mention that we will make sure in that process that we're empowering Liberians and Liberian businesses to participate in, in, in the growth of this country and of our economy. Let me give you a simple example, right? So we are an uh, import-based economy today, meaning we import everything we consume, from rice to furniture, to building materials, everything we import. Importation, as I've said on many occasions, is basic arithmetic. It's not even algebra, it's not scientific. Meaning you import something, Chris, for three dollars, maybe you sell for three fifty or four dollars. You import for ten, maybe you sell for ten twenty or you sell for eleven or twelve. Right? Librarians can do this, and the government is one of, if not the biggest, procurer in the country. By the way, it shouldn't be that way. It should be the private sector, but I believe the government is. So government procurement should be done by librarians. So these are the kinds of things we need to do, and we need to be serious. And and yes, our our foreign partners do who are here, and we want to attract. There's room for everybody if we grow in the pie, but we make no apologies about Liberians disproportionately benefiting from the growth in the in, in our con in, in our economy. Okay, so as Clarence gets set to take the calls, let, let me come in with this question, Chief. Uh, some of these media engagement, as I was saying, uh, you've always raised you you got a position on the establishment of a World Crown Court, and the latest is electoral reform, and the B to that could be other electoral reform is that you started the fear again too early about this election, wanting an electoral reform. How do you respond to that? You know, I, I think if, if we don't start the conversation now about uh, election, electoral reform, you know, shame on us as leaders. Let me tell you why. We, we just came through the by-election in December where the CPP participated, as I think Clarence mentioned earlier, we were relatively successful. We won you know, quite a few seats. And in that process, we, we had many complaints about the, the voter registration process. Um, and, and so a litany, we went to the ECWAS court, all of these things. And then to wait and not do anything about it and wait again to 2023, that is doing the CPP and expecting different results. So we need to start now calling all those those things and, and proposing reforms like, like biometric, for example, right? Um, and, and so, yes, I am calling on the government uh, and the people of Liberia to start now, start demanding, you know, those reforms so that we'll get to 2023. We're not repeating the same, the same arguments, you know, shame on us if we don't start the argument now. I understand the, the net, and please correct me if I'm wrong, it proposed like a budget of $91 million. Mm -hmm. I, again, I don't, and even if you include biometric in there, that number doesn't make any sense to me. It's a small so, one. It's too big. Look, again, <laughs> I, I like to compare facts. 
right? Uh, Liberians, they think they get tired of this, but it's helpful. Ghana has 17, 17.5 million voters. We have, last election, 2.1 million, right? Their, I think their budget for elections for 17.5 million was around 40 million United States dollars. How can we be asking for $91 million for 2.1 million people, even if you got biometric in there? How does that make any sense? I don't get it. Assuming that, now I haven't seen the detail of 91 million, but just looking at the top line, you know, it, it just doesn't make any sense. But anyway, so your, your point, yes. We got to start talking about these things now, putting pressure, demanding that these things change. Uh, and we can't wait until... But they have to be, they have to be monetized. Yes, they, they need resources. And the government is crying, doesn't they, have the money for that. But but you, the government has to find the money for okay for, 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 we, we for, have our, to for our democracy Thank to, to to continue, and we don't cause. Challenges Thank you, Mr. Kumi. We, 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 we have to we have to take calls. Chris, Chris, did you ask you about the work? Yeah, 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 yeah. So so yeah. So we want I, to lead. We want to lead the issue before you take. Uh, please appeal to your to your callers there. Let it give a little time because yes. this is one of the. The, the turning the issue in Liberian political discourse. Well, the war crimes code? The war crimes yeah, let me answer. So, what is your yeah, statement so, the war crime code? so, we issued a statement, mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, both in writing, and then I, I, I made a statement verbally as well, that if we wanted to end this era of impunity in our country, right, we need war economic crime court to do that. And the statement is very, very clear on that and the fact that we need that. So we are very clear on the what that we need. We need that, and and again, uh, I would encourage your listeners. It, it's online uh, to read the statement, but yes, and and oh, by the way, uh, the UP issued a similar statement after we did ours. I believe the Liberty Party issued a similar statement, and so on and so forth. So I think there's there's growing consensus on the need for for war economic crimes court again to end this era. Of impunity, and let me also say, you know, uh, because people only think about the retributive side, but but we got to think about the restorative side, and also some people have been wrongly accused of crimes, and that this process, if done correctly and must be done correctly, will absolve some people. Some people will prove their innocence. So we got to look at all sides of this as we think about, you know, due process for for our people. But the most important thing is this. This era of impunity where people can think you can just get away with everything. You cannot run any society, any country, any organization unless people follow the rules and there are consequences if they do not follow the Why rules. Why do you think Prince is making all this noise? Is he virtually guilty of that? I, I know, I don't know. I, and look, this process should always presume, and is our law, uh, uh, presumption of innocence. And and so I can't speak for, for Senator Johnson in terms of why he's reacting the way he is, but we have to presume. Uh, innocence and, and it's, it's our law and we have to do it and so but I can't speak to why it is. Well, that is Anna Kumi once the war and economic crimes code established in Liberia. Folks, Joy FM is also relaying the show this morning. This is the morning rush. Just listen to the numbers I will call because if I don't call a number you call, I will not pick up that call. 777 900995 0886 exclusively for women. 0886-458902 is for women. And of course, the other numbers are 777 464050 30 seconds, because we want more colors. Hello? Good morning, Clarence. Good morning, Chris. And good morning, Tim and Gilad. And good morning to the Honorable Alexander Benedict Cummings. This is Mohammed Sharif, and I call you from Bromwell, Montserrat County. Yeah. I've listened to Mr. Cummings very well and have been following his work actually nationally and internationally. I think he's well suited and he has the charisma, he has the leadership track record based on what he has delivered nationally and internationally and he loves for country. This is one thing I want to ask Mr. Cummings. Mr. Cummings, why is it that you don't like people to discuss some of the things that you have done for Liberians and that of Liberia, especially during the tenure of Madame Benny Johnson? You have done so much for this country. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. You've asked. Hello? Thank you, Clarence. And a little pleasant morning to Mr. Fanny. Yeah. I am in the honor of the community and I call you for two community this morning. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to appreciate Mr. Cummings for his objectivity. I think he brought a lot of sense to the peace schools. And I'd like to also respectfully disagree with Mr. Cummings where he talked about us doing the same thing over and over and expecting the same results. Mm -hmm. How can Mr. Kumi say to us that it is mere insanity to be doing the same thing over and over and expecting the same results when he's could not 
Thank you. Miss manage the resources. Hello? I'm sorry. This slang is for female. I said that and I mean it. Hello? Hello? Yeah? Good morning. Good morning. Yes, uh, let me say good morning to Smokey Yo. Um, this is Young for Dad, Charlie Bull, Young for. Mm -hmm. I call you from District 14 in Togo. Yeah. I want to say thank you to Mr. Cummings. I you know actually he has gone far to not only the ASC or the CPK, but to the Liberian people. Mm -hmm. But every time I tell him to the call, to so that the Liberian people is going to listen to what the incoming people are about, the man who wants to be his people will have to say to his people, will tell him, thank you, we in support of the head. It's our prayer that you emerge as the CPP here, and you know, uh, come December or January to our convention. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. We can take call you. I hope it's a woman. Hello? Hello. I'm sorry, sir. Can't take you here. We're taking women. Uh, women on this number 0886 458902. That number is only for women. Hello? 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 Yeah, hello. Yeah, go ahead. Let's take this call from outside Liberia. Hello? Hello, my name is Nathan. I'm calling from Europe. How are you? I'm okay. We are okay here. Go ahead. Thank you. Remember, I talk about all politics is local here. Hello. Good morning, Clarence. Yeah, good morning. Good morning to Mr. Elizondo Comics. Yeah. My name is Focus Wilson. Focus, go ahead. Governor Clarence addressed the agenda today to the Democratic Movement for the Real Nation, but His Excellency, the President of the Republic. Focus, of Focus, we get a loss of your time, man. Just go ahead. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Thank you. Hello? Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Okay, this is Patricia Login from the Liberia Business Society as a director. Okay. Carol, let me thank you for inviting uh, Mr. Cummings and all of the journalists that came alongside to, to, take, to control this entire program. Mm. Let me thank Steve Marks, let me thank Mr. Siafa Salif for coming. I just want to ask. What he will do for persons with disability. Thank you, thank you, Madam Logan. Uh, can we talk to this caller? Yes, we can. Hello, hello. Yeah. 
Thank you, thank you, Yaba. Thank you. We, we're taking we we're taking four more calls. Hello. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Are you gone? Well, I didn't cut you off. Hello. Yeah, good morning. What's your name, sir? We have this able leadership. We gotta go. Hello. Yes, good morning, Clarence. Good. Uh, my name is Mark S. Billing. Okay, Mark. Um, yeah, thank you, Mr. Collins, for your economic platform that you have to the to address people. But I, I'd like to ask you this question. How long will it take in your administration for Liberia to start to benefit from what you have talked about? Will okay, how long will it take? Second to the last caller. Hello. I'm sorry, your man, I can't take you on this line. Hello? Good morning. Good morning, sir. It is okay, man? Yeah, you are live, sir. So Good you, Oh, my God, we got to go. Uh, hello? Yeah? Good morning, how are you? Good morning, I'm okay. Uh, my name is Kumar Sharif, and I call my brother resident. Okay. Let me say good morning to my brother president. Thank you. We're not taking calls again. We end the show as exactly at nine thirty, and so we'll move on to comments. Mr. Cummins, you you heard the concerns from the callers. Yep. Uh, thank you, uh, Clarence. Um, so the first caller asks why I don't like to talk about what I've done uh, for the country, uh, the found my foundation, and other. And the reason why is, and, and look, I'm in politics now, and maybe I need to change this approach, right? But these things we've done for Liberians and Liberia around the country, they were not done for political reasons, for political gain. You know, the foundation, for example, gives scholarships, one of the primary things it does, in science, math, technology, etc. And the criteria for getting those scholarships 
has nothing to do with political affiliation. Chris, we don't ask you whether you ANC, CPP, CDC. We don't ask your 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 religion. We don't ask your tribe. If if you merit it, if you make the the GPA and the other criteria, you get you you get a scholarship. And I use that as an example to say these things we're doing are not meant for. I, I keep saying to our people who've been blessed, and we want to help our country and our people, and that's why we do these things. But I'm being admonished, you know, encouraged to let people know what these things are and so we'll do we'll do more of that but we're doing a lot to help our country and our people it's something we're very proud of and i see we'll put our record up against uh, anybody else and, and see where, where that lies um there was a question about you know collaboration with the up and my statement about doing the same thing and expecting different results the first thing i would say is that i i'm not one of those who subscribed to the point that the UP was a failed uh, a government. I, I think there were things they could have done better and different, but from where uh, they took the country, Mrs. Saleem in 2006, to where she left it, the country moved and improved. And I wish the CDC government would have continued that trajectory, would have built on, would have discarded those things that were not working because it wasn't perfect, and those things that were working, they could have built on it and we'd be further along on, on this journey. Um, so, so again, the, the, the premise of the question, uh, you know, I, I, I disagree with. The question was, if I lead the CPP, how would we bring people together? And this is why it's important now that as we aspire to lead this, the, the CPP, we want to make sure we're not using what I call the scorched earth strategy where we are burning bridges where we're abusing people, where we're being disrespectful. Even as we compete, we want to do it in a way that's respectful so that in the end, we can come together as one. And we have to keep reminding each other the reasons why we're coming together. We want to restore good governance. We want to make president, we are one time president. We want to grow the economy of our country. And those are the things that will, come, will, will bind us no matter who wins the, the CP nomination. The question of constituency, I think I've answered that. But let me say to the caller, uh, in 2023, I will win Maryland. So I look, I lost the election in in 2017. In fact, right in 2023, we will deliver Maryland. If, if that's the, the the point of the question, we will deliver Maryland. In in uh, in December, I wasn't on the ballot. The, the last like, we will we will win Maryland. We will deliver Maryland. And I think if I recall correctly, and again, you guys, please correct me. The callers will. Um, I think this is selling one elections in 2005. I don't believe she won't for me, but correct me if I'm wrong. So just to put these facts out there, I like to deal with facts, but we'll, we'll win Maryland in 2023. Um, Patricia, and the, the only woman that calls, that's why I remember her name. So Patricia called about disability, and Patricia, both in the ANC today and, and in a CPP, Commerce Letter Administration, we will make sure we're looking after the disabled Liberians, because unlike other parts of the sub-region of the continent, because of our civil war, uh, that constituency uh, we need to look after. And that's something we will make sure with that program is targeted at uh, this, this evil. Question one, how long will it take for people to see the impact? People will start to see the impact in year one. Uh, by the way, I'm not suggesting we'll solve everything in year one. This should be very clear. But people will see and feel a difference. People will see and feel a difference in year one of upcoming administration. I commit to that. You will see and feel a difference. Librarians will sense, will feel that things are getting better, things are improving. I'm not suggesting we'll solve all the problems of, of our country. Um, and then the last question, you know, how do I distinguish myself uh, from, from GMB? First of all, we got many things in common and I, I want to start there. You know, I believe we both care for our country. We both believe in Liberia. We're both in the CPP, so that, that provides some common ground. Um, but the, I think the difference, uh, I would say, is I, I bring a different set of experiences than uh, the former vice president. Uh, and Liberians will have to decide whether that different set of experiences is what they think we need to lead our country. My experience of running in large complex organizations and delivering results. So I remind Liberians that, you know, the corporations I work for, 
They were not Liberian corporations, not my mother, not my father, no relationships. We earn the results we got every day and the success we have every day. And my experiences are there, they are clear. I keep seeing the best way to predict future performance and future behavior is past performance and past behavior. And I think those are the sort of contrasts Liberians need to bring okay. to them. We got just uh, five minutes. Now, I know Tim has one wants to come in. In the event you won the standard bearership in the CPP, who do you have in mind as a running mate? I think it's premature, uh, Clarence, to start naming running mates now. Um, what I would say to you that we, we will develop our cri the criteria um, and then we'll look within the CPP uh, because that's per our framework agreement and we want to honor and follow that and we'll select uh, the vice standard bearer from CPP partisans per the agreement uh, with the specific criteria laid out. But I think it's premature too early to start talking about who would be the VSP. Uh, I mean, just politically, you know, you start to exclude people and that's not smart politically to, to do that too early. So. Tima, do you want to come in? Yeah, that might be my last question now because we're running out of time and I have to go back to Mascali. Um, I want Mr. Comis to tell us his growing your process, how you was growing, how you grew up, the sort of places whether yeah. you went to government school, yeah. private school, yeah. whether you married, how did you meet your wife, right. you know, sort of Romeo and Juliet sort of thing. You show, you show four minutes will be enough of okay, it. I, I, <laughs> I, I, can, I can do it. It'll, it'll, it'll be quick. Uh, and it, it's more a reminder that uh, we, we grew up in Point Four across across the bridge. I went to demonstration school on, on Clay government school. I went to CBA, parochial school, Methodist school. I went to Cuttington. Um, I'm being married to my wife, Teresa. We've married for almost 40 years. We have two young adult uh, children, my daughter, Ayo, and my son, Boikai. And we have three biological, one adopted uh, grandchild. So we have four, four grandchildren. Um, but I grew up like any young Liberian. I played football, not very well, but I played with a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, I was always in student government and leadership uh, throughout my, my educational process. In fact, I was senior class president, I was, I was student senate, treasurer, all of these things. Uh, like most librarian young men, I had more than one girlfriend at any point in time. Um, and, you know, I, but that, that was, in fact, I, I have a girlfriend in Yucatan. Uh, we won't call her name because she's married and got kids now. But, uh, but like, like, like all young men, you know, I did those things, no, nothing perfect about me, just a normal uh, life growing up uh, here in Liberia, and it's something I, you know, I'm, uh, I'm proud of to, have, to have come from this country. Everything I am today, I owe to Liberia. So let me, uh, if I may conclude, let me further thank all of you guys, uh, Chris, T. Max, Clarence, for the opportunity, good questions, good interactions. And let me leave Liberians again, uh, I'm, I'm becoming repetitive and redundant, but it's okay. Uh, my two favorite sayings, Right, you can't keep doing the same and expect different results. And the best predictor of future behavior, future performance, is past behavior, past performance. And I want Liberians to strive for a better country. We deserve a better Liberia. Let's push each other. Let's be more demanding of each other. Let's not settle for mediocrity. Right? Let's let's be ambitious for, for our country and for ourselves. Because it's through that process that we can change this country. And I believe passionately that we can change Liberia for the benefit of all Liberians. You still so maintain George Weah would be a one-time president. Absolutely. The, 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 the unity of the CPP would, will ensure that uh, President Weah will be a one-time president. And to back to the question about Lufa, look, it will make it harder for us if Lufa is after he gets back, see improvement in the livelihoods. Then it will make it more difficult. And unfortunately, I don't think that will happen, but, but I hope it does. Alexander Benedict Cummings is here. Uh, he was our guest here. T-Max, anything finally, Chris? We got to go now. We, we got to go. Guys? Well, I, I, I would say um, we, this is our second time having this interview with political leaders. And I think this conglomeration is, 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 this collaboration is open to all political parties if you want us to interview you. I don't take uh, talking points. Uh, if you want to be president of Liberia, I'll take you. With the assumption that you know everything that you have the solution to our problem so i don't want people to tell me what question to ask them what question <laughs> i should ask them if you want to utilize the expertise of this team just get on let us know of course there's a fees to pay for that 
and that we're interviewing. Well, thank you so much. Uh, this is the morning rose. Christopher Sally has been here. Thanks to all of our uh, colleagues uh, to the uh, at the other stations, Prime FM, Joy FM, True FM. Let me, let me just use this platform quickly to announce to the audience, especially State of the Nation. State of the Nation. I, I'm ahead of you already. <laughs> uh, Simon Jackson <laughs> will take our question. Simon Jackson. Yes. I like that. The man has stolen my guest. <laughs> But it's, it's, uh, uh, but it's good to go, folks. Uh, State of the Nation with Chris. He says Sam Jackson is going to be a guest today. Thanks to all of you for following, man. If you call, you did not get through. It was not deliberate. Just that the lines were basic. Clarence Jackson is my name. Guys, waiting tomorrow morning. We we'll back here at the Politicians Freedom Fighter, where they will answer 2023. All right. Okay. So I have a.